Hey everybody, Polly Petal is here, here to enter yet another contest. Uh, this time I'm entering JT's record room and is pushed for 100 subs. I think last time I looked he was at 100 or above 100, I'm sure. So, you know, push well received and I hope it pushes well beyond that. Um, his contest was fairly simple. It was show six records from six different genres and uh, he had actually kind of spelled out the genres. So even easier, right? You know, just gonna pick from within those. So, um, well, let's jump right into it. Number one is the uh, first genre he wanted us to show a record for was uh, folk. And, um, you know, I don't always love folk, but uh, I, certain aspects of folk I definitely do enjoy. And so I do have some folk and I definitely have, um, I guess, perhaps a favorite, um, certainly high up there anyway. And so today I'll show my copy of Burt Yanch's uh, Lucky 13. And um, if you're not familiar with Burt Yanch, he was, I believe, um, Irish, I believe, um, folk guitarist, folk singer. Um, aside from his solo career, he was also in the uh, most fantastic group, uh, The Pentangle, which is also very good. Um, this album is, this was actually the first, uh, his first release in the US, but I guess this one's actually a kind of a combo of his first two European albums. Um, but this is just a fantastic album, um, acoustic guitar, and there's the song Angie on this, which of course um, was his take on Angie. Uh, somebody else had written it before me, I'm drawing a blank on who originally did it. But anyway, his version on this, unbelievable. Uh, this just resonated with me from an early age. This was my mother's record. She played it, and I'm pretty sure this is one of the reasons I picked up the guitar. Um, and, you know, after hearing it a few more times, I put the guitar back down. Um, but it's just fantastic. Uh, you know, his fingers are, you know, close to God, I guess. So, you know, unbelievable. So Bert Yanch for folk. Um, okay, next one we had was uh, British Blues. Um, I wasn't quite sure about British Blues, but, uh, um, you know, kind of looked up some different options on it. So got this we've got a fun one here. Um, so for British Blues, today I'll show my copy of... Um, Juicy Lucy, get a whiff. Um, Juicy Lucy was, you know, British kind of bluesy band. Um, you know, this was, I think, about their third album. Um, the first two were a little bit more harder rocking. This one probably leans a little bit more towards the boogie side of things, but still in that kind of blues rock vein. Um, kind of a fun cover and all that kind of stuff. Um, they do a, a they do a cover of what did they do this one? Um, uh, Midnight Rider, Almond Brothers Midnight Rider, which is pretty good on this copy. And this was fun. This is a uh, this is actually a, a promo copy. You can see the DJ promo um, sticker on the front, and I believe this is also even a uh, yeah, this is a uh, uh, white label promo even. So that's always kind of fun. Um, but yeah, Juicy Lucy, get a whiff. Uh, I always like that one too. The uh, aside from the fun front cover, get a whiff. There's that too. So. Very nice, very nice, cool record there. So for British Blues. Um, now for Indie, I actually had the hardest time with Indie. You know, I used to have a fair amount of the earlier um, things like Talking Heads and REM and that kind of stuff, but uh, I moved away from that a little bit ago, um, kind of went in a different direction with my records in, in some regards, and I knew those were kind of the easy sell items, so I actually sold most of that kind of stuff off um, with little to no regret. I, I still enjoy that stuff. Um, it's just not something I always listen to. Um, but anyway, for my indie, I'm going to show my copy of The Things, self-titled. Um, now, The Things, this is actually, this is produced by Brett Guritz of uh, Bad Religion. Um, this is on the Epitaph label. In fact, it's a very early Epitaph. Um, but, you know, because Epitaph's known for punk rock. This was at a time when, you know, especially Brett, you know, all this kind of stuff was kind of moving a little bit away from punk, was trying to kind of vary the uh, label. So this one's more kind of a garage um, it, it, indie rock sort of vibe, not ex not exactly punk, um, but it, it's pretty good. You know, it's um, definitely um, it's it's a little bit raw, um, but you know, it, it's good. It, it, it's a good album. I think about nineteen eighty eight or so. Um, the things, so self title. Okay, and now the next one was what pop rock, um, which is obviously very general general pop or rock. I think it was. Um, so what I decided to do on this one was. You know, because obviously I, I could pick any number of pop or rock. I mean, I've got a lot of just pop and rock. I mean, I got lots of that kind of stuff. But um, I thought we'd just kind of combine the two and call it pop rock. I think of pop rocks, right? Pop with candy that fizzes in your mouth and pops. Yeah, that's a pop rock. That sounds good. But anyway, pop rock. So I thought, okay, what is the number one pop rock group? And it's, people are probably shouting on some other things right now. But I, I'm going to go with 
U2, right? I mean, come on, does it get any more pop rock than them? They are very much pop. Um, they do have a rock edge to them, um, but I, that's pop rock, right? And this is uh, Joshua Tree. Now, actually, when I was thinking about making this video, this one came up, you know, as being for pop rock. I thought to myself, what am I going to say about this album? And one thing I thought about saying is, you know, I don't love U2. I have a couple U2 albums, but you know, I, you know, I just, I grew up around U2. U2 was played you know, endlessly, all this kind of stuff. Um, but as I was thinking to myself about how much I don't like U2, or I guess how much I don't love U2, I was thinking, well, you know, okay, I like um, Sunday Bloody Sunday. That's a good song. You know, I like, um, I, I, I like one, when that comes on the radio, I can't help it, I sing along with it. Um, the Sweetest Thing, for some reason that song always kind of got to me. So then I started thinking, man, okay, so you know what, there are definitely good U2 songs, and I do enjoy U2. Um, okay, while I may not love U2, I'm not gonna hate on them, you know? Honestly, they, they put together some good music. And say what you will about Bono, uh, you know, he is what he is. It's just it's sticking to the music, it's solid. They're solid, okay? Um, this was actually a fun one too, because I'd forgotten. I hadn't pulled this album out in a long time. This is the first US press, I guess, obviously, uh, gatefold, you know how that all works. And um, it does actually even have the, uh, you know, inserts and all that kind of stuff. But one thing, and I don't, again, I don't know if I remembered this, forgot this, or knew this or not, but this one is actually one of those, um, you know, whether it's uh, Quiex or, I don't know if you can see that on the video, but it's, you know, it's translucent. I, I, I'm holding a flashlight behind it. I'm just not, I don't have like specters just floating around records here. So, um, but you know, it's one of those Quiex or Super Virgin um, translucent. Can, can you see me? No, not really. Um, record, which is kind of cool. I, you know, it's, it is what it is. I mean, it doesn't make it, you know, super valuable or rare or anything like that, but I always like when I come across those records. And they generally do, generally speaking, they do sound better than their standard black wax uh, variations. So, um, okay, so you two for what I'm calling pop rock. Pop rocks. Now I really want some pop rocks. Remember the ones that turned to gum? Some of the pop rocks you think pop, they split and turn to gum. Anyway. Okay, so next we had um, old school metal. And again, you know, I don't have as much metal as I'd like to have. I certainly would like to have a lot more old school metal. And I thought, well, what, how, how old do I want to get? I'm going Black Sabbath, that kind of stuff? And I could have, but no. So for old school metal, I'm going to show my copy of Dawkin. Uh, you're breaking the chains. So this is the first US pressing. And as you can probably tell, this, my copy of this is beat to heck. I mean, it's, you know, it's missing, it's missing. And normally when I have records that look like this, I would be saying, yeah, like the records, you know, the, the sleeve's not so great, um, the, you, but you can't play the sleeve, right? Don't play the sleeve, and you know, but the record's great. I, mean, a lot of, I have a lot of records where the, the jacket's less than perfect, but the records sound really good. And they really good. This one, and it's probably hard to tell, but um, this is not that case. Um, this one's actually, really really beat to hell but i really enjoy this album and uh you know i got into docking a little bit later than than well later than when i was you know or big um and uh i you know enjoyed them more than i thought i would so you know so my little shout out to docking thank you docking so docking for old school metal okay and last but not least is jazz um now jazz is i have a mixed relationship with jazz um you know i feel like a lot of times record people with records you definitely you know kind of feel this push to to like jazz to get into jazz to own jazz to play jazz and i can respect jazz and i definitely can appreciate the aspects of jazz but quite frankly i don't listen to a lot of jazz and i say that because i don't necessarily think i have the time for jazz i don't have the time to sit there and really absorb and and uh, really kind of take in the music and the subtlety and the nuances and all this kind of stuff i mean i know i know jazz probably does work some background music too but i feel it, jazz gets a little bit more involved than some of the other stuff i like to to listen to um, maybe later in life I will come around to it but um, you know that's it hasn't happened yet anyway so again I will never dismiss a whole entire genre you never hear me say oh I can't stand jazz or I hate country I'm mean, not gonna that's not me I just feel like it my time hasn't come yet for these genres or these types of music it, maybe I'll get there maybe I won't oh all right so but I do have some jazz believe it or not so um, what I'll show today is um, my one and only Miles Davis album my own Miles in the Sky, um, you know, and what I can say about this jazz, this album is not much besides it is a jazz album of my own. I've only listened to it a couple times. It's uh, pretty good, but again, it's not, my head's not there. It's not in my headspace yet. Perhaps someday I, I'm open to the idea. It just hasn't happened for me yet. So um, there's a lot, a lot of genres, a lot of bands that are like that. And again, I hold out hope and we'll see. So there we go. So I got jazz, old school metal, what I'm calling pop rock, indie, British blues, 
and folk. All right, so JT's Record Room, I hope the best to you. I hope you get to 100 and 100,000 and then some. So thank you for the contest. Thank you for the opportunity. And to everybody else, have a good evening and a good rest of the week. Thank you.